Hello everyone. Welcome to How to Build a Prepper Pantry on a Budget. I'm Rebecca from Simple Suburban Living. Now in this video, I'm going to show you my process for making sure that I stay on my budget when I'm building my pantry. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out right from the beginning before I even get into the meat of this video. And that is that your list will look different from mine and your budget will very likely be different from mine as well. So what I want you to take away from this video is not that you should have these things in your pantry and not that you should spend the amount that I'm going to spend, okay? Because it's a very individual thing. One of the problems that I see in a lot of the prepping videos when it comes to a prepper pantry is that everyone gives you a list and here's what you should have and you should have, you know, a 50 pound bag of beans and a 50 pound bag of rice. But if you don't eat beans, beans and rice, you have no idea how to cook them, you don't like them, and so on, then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. So keep that in mind as I share these things with you. So over to the right, you'll see that I have a list, a shopping list. And I created this when I thought about what types of things that I want to have on hand all the time. Now, these are the things that I like to keep in my pantry. This is roughly a month, month and a half worth of food. And it's not based on a menu. It's just based on, like you can see that there's tomatoes, tomato sauce, a couple different sizes of tomato sauce, and so on. And it's because I use those things on a regular basis. And so my goal with creating my list was so that I could make almost any meal that I would typically make or pretty much any meal that I typically make if I have these items in my pantry. As I go down further down this list, you'll see that I also have um, some non-food items and then frozen foods and things like that. For this video, I'm just going to focus on the non-perishable items, but I just want to mention that with these perishable items, the frozen foods and dairy and things like that, those are the things that I like to keep on hand on a regular basis. And again, that fits with me being able to make pretty much anything that I want if I have these things on hand. So this is kind of my general uh, pantry and fridge and freezer list that I like to keep well stocked. And then the non-perishable items are ones that I want to stock up on. Okay, so there are a couple of ways that you can go about making your own list. You can do like I did and you can just create a list of all the things that you like to have on hand. You know, so I, I'd like to have some tomato products. I'd like to have some canned beans, tuna, chicken, you know, green chilies. I don't even use the roasted green chilies very often, but I like having one in my pantry so that if I decide to use it, you know, I, I have it there. Um, black olives, some of the uh, canned soups that I can use in recipes and things like that. So you can do it that way. You can just think, what are the things that you like? You can also make a menu plan for a month and then you can jot down everything that you need for that. And then you can make your own list that way. So it, it kind of depends on if you are more of a menu planning type of person, or if like me, you can cook pretty much anything as long as you've got the ingredients on hand. So it just depends on your style. Either way, you'll start off by making a list of the things that you want to ensure you have on hand at all times, okay? Then from there, and, and actually let me back up and say, I would recommend that your first goal is to stock all of the things that are on your list. And this is going to be in your, whatever your primary pantry is. So I am actually, as I record this, I'm in the process of moving to my mom's home in California to care for her. And she has a small pantry there. So I'm hoping that all of these things will fit in her pantry fine. And if not, I may have to adapt my list a little bit. 
But the idea of this first list is the things that you keep in, in wherever your pantry is, most likely in your kitchen. And that's what you pull from on a daily or weekly basis as you prepare your food. So my personal goal is to double the amount of these items as my prepper pantry. I am going to be very limited on space. And so most likely it will be like under the bed type of uh, food storage. So anyway, that's what I'm going to talk about is how do you build up whatever your list is? How do you do that on your specific budget? And that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so I have decided that I can spend 20 to $25 a week in addition to my regular grocery buying to stock my pantry. Now, you'll notice that I made a note up here, weekly buy one gallon of bottled water, and that's a way to build my water storage without spending a lot all at once, but just if I buy pick up one gallon of water a week, I'm going to end up having a stockpile of water. Now, one thing that is unique to me is that my husband and I decided to go carless. Oh gosh, it's going on five years now. And we do have e-bikes and we plan to most of the time we'll ride our bikes to the store. And obviously my mom has a car at the age of 89. We're not making her ride a bike. Um, So we will have access to her car when needed. But our goal is to use our bikes most of the time when we're doing things just the two of us. So I have in here, keep in mind bike limits. So I'm going to mix small items uh, like toothpaste when I buy something like toilet paper that's bigger because there's only so much that I can fit on the bike. Now, speaking of toilet paper, before I go into showing you how I make sure that I'm only going to spend a certain amount per week on my grocery trips, I'm going to add to this little list here these items that are on the right. These are non-food items. And I'm going to go ahead and plug them into my list just so they're spread out. And um, that way I'm not trying to buy all my toilet paper in week 16 or that type of thing. And especially now when there's limits and things like that. So I'm going to just, first of all, before I start building out the rest of my stockpile list, I'm just going to plug all of these items in. So you can see toilet paper four packs of 12 is on my list. So I am going to put that once, um, basically once a month, I'm going to just put toilet paper on my list to buy a 12 pack. And if needed, I can uh, go down and and do some more weeks down here. So I've got toilet paper. And obviously, I would not want to get paper towels on the same uh, shopping trip because there wouldn't be room for them. So, and actually, let me add here. I'm going to just say 12 pack. All right. So I think I'm going to do the paper towels starting with the week three and go down here and I'm going to do two packs each time. So I'm going to do paper towels to pack and see I have a minimum of eight and so if I do that for four weeks then that'll work. So again this is a way to make sure that I get a balance of products over this period of time while I'm stockpiling. And let me also mention that during this process, I will continually restock these items in my main pantry. So for example, if I had used two cans of diced tomatoes out of the four from my main pantry, I would buy two specific to that, specifically for that and put them back in there And that would be in addition to whatever I buy from this plan here. Okay, so I've got the paper towels listed, toothpaste, six tubes. Usually I get them in three packs. So I'm going to put and I'm just going to do that twice. 
and toothbrushes. I'll just get the, put them right here. Okay, shampoo. I want four shampoos and four body wash. So I'm just going to do shampoo. And notice how I'm putting these items on ones where I don't have the bigger things like the toilet paper and the paper towels. Because I'm already, um, those items are a little bit pricey. And so I'm not going to add as much on those weeks. And so body wash, I'm also going to go ahead and put, uh, I'll put these over here too. So see, the main thing that I'm doing right now is I'm just spreading out these items so that I don't have to buy them all at once and also so that I'm getting a variety of items. Because what I think sometimes happens is people will go in and they'll just buy like a ton of body wash. Okay, that's great, but then what if you don't have what else you need? So this way I'm building up my stockpile with a variety of items over a period of time. So from the very beginning, and you'll see this is especially true as I start filling in the food items, my stockpile will have a good variety of items. Okay, I just need a six pack of razors. I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. All right, and I'm gonna get two, two packs of dental floss. Uh, let's see. And I'm gonna do it. I don't wanna do just wait until week 14 to add that to my stockpile. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one here as well. And actually, it kind of makes sense to get this with when I'm getting the toothpaste like I did here because they'd be right next to it in the store. So why not? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that there. Okay, and then Q-tips. I'll go ahead and put Q-tips here. And laundry detergent. So I have here four small bottles. I think I'm going to get, well, for now I'm gonna put that down. Four small bottles of laundry detergent. Okay. All right, so that way I now have my non-food items spread out over a period of, I think I've got 20 weeks there that I have it spread out to purchase those items. So again, this is just to build my stockpile. It's in addition to my regular stock of items. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to start building my stockpile with this, um, based on this list here. Okay, and what I have found helpful is going to the walmart.com, or actually I'm on grocery.walmart.com site. And the reason that I'm using that is twofold. Well, actually probably about three reasons. One is that I have a Walmart neighborhood market nearby that I can easily bike to. Secondly, overall the prices are pretty good. And then also you'll find that there's a great feature and that is that I can um, see how much I'm spending in my shopping cart. And this is what helps me stay on my $25 a week budget. This is where the planning comes in and I start adding things to my cart and I see this title, this, um, and I see this total go up and once I get close to that $25 mark, that's when I stop putting things into my list for that week. But I'm gonna first start off by taking these items that are in there out because I wanna start fresh. 
Now, the only thing I'm leaving in my cart is the gallon of water because again, remember that I want to get one a week. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, from my master list, I'm going to copy all the canned goods just, and I'm gonna put them over here on this one. And I'm gonna paste these all down here. And they definitely, if I did all of these in this week, especially with the toilet paper, I would definitely go over the $25, but don't worry, you'll see how I deal with that. Okay, so I've got the bottled water. Let me now go into my list here and I'm gonna type in toilet paper. And I'm just gonna pick this 12 pack, the Cottonelle for $12.48. I'll put it in there and you'll see that up here at the top, my total in my cart is now $13.31. So let's just keep going for cans, diced tomatoes. Oops, I didn't need to put the number four because obviously that's for me. So I'm going to pick these tomatoes and I'm gonna keep adding till there's four on the list. And you can see there's four there now. And now I'm up to $15.15. .15. Now, if I really wanted to worry about variety being uh, not having too much of one thing, I could put a can, one can of diced tomatoes in week one, one in week two, and so on. But since I already have my fully stocked pantry with everything that's on this list, I have it in my main pantry, I'm okay with it taking a while to build this second stockpile. All right, so four cans of diced tomatoes. Let's go ahead and put in tomato sauce. Okay, and there's tomato sauce. I'm doing the eight ounce. You'll see on my list here, I have eight ounce and I also have 16 ounce. So I'm going to first put in four eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, and then I'll do four 16 ounce cans of tomato sauce. Okay, and now let's do the, I, I say over here 16 ounce, but they're 15 ounce, but that's fine. Okay, now you can see that I'm up to $18.11, so I can still add some more in. So I'm going to do canned black beans. And I have on my list two, so I'll add two to the cart. And now I'm up to $19.07. I'm gonna put canned garbanzo beans. And two of those. And then canned refried beans. Okay, and I wanted three cans of those, so that's what I've added. And I look up here at my total, it's now 2234, so I can still go a little bit more. Um, let's see if I have enough still to get three cans. Oh, you know what? I meant to do two cans of refried beans. So let me go down one there. Okay. And I'm going to do three cans of chili. And hopefully I'll be able to squeak that in. There's chili with beans for $1.28. And there's chili with no beans for $1.12, which is interesting because usually you expect the one with beans to be uh, cheaper. But what I could do here is I can get the chili with no beans and I could always add a can of beans to it. So that's what I'm going to get, especially since it's cheaper. And so let's see if I can add three cans of that in and still be in my budget. Okay, barely, $24.93. Okay, 
So now that I've hit that point, I don't have any left in my budget for that week because I'm trying to stay at $25 or less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these and paste them into week two. And I'm going to start the same process over again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything but the water out of my cart. All right, and now we're going to go for a three pack of toothpaste or three individual tubes of toothpaste. Okay, here we've got a three pack here. So I'm gonna add that to my cart. All right, and I'm at 675. Let's do dental floss. And my husband likes Glide brand, so that's what I'm going to get. And this is a two pack here. Okay, and then I'm going to do canned tuna. And this is one thing, I'm not um, really brand loyal, but I do really like the Bumblebee solid um, white. Let's see, four cans. Oh, that's chunk white. I want the solid. Hopefully they have it. I might need to go over here for brand. So let me just click on Bumblebee and then that way it will be okay so that's chunk light solid white here we go this is what I want so I'm going to add that and now I'm up to $19.26 so I probably can put in the four cans of chicken okay so there's two cans there and here's a four pack and you can look and see what is the best value so here this is 15 cents an ounce compared to 16.5 cents an ounce. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my cart. Oops, now that put me a little over. That put me at 26.74. So I have to decide if it's going to be worth it for me to go over, but since I'm trying not to, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out of my cart. And I might pick a couple of cheaper things. Let's see, I'm at 19. 26 so let me go ahead and I'm just gonna move these because I know I won't be able to get either of them for that to stay in my budget and but I, I can add some roasted green chilies And I know that there's a great value brand here for 60 cents. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the sliced black olives. Going to get that one. I'm at 2134. So I think I'm gonna stop there because then I've got all these soups and things that I want to get. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move. The, actually, I think I can get the molasses. So let me try and see. Okay, 324. And that brought me up to 2458. So you can see how using this method, I'm sure that I don't go over any of the weeks. So let me go ahead and just cut these items and I'm going to move them over to here and we'll start the same process over again. I'm going to speed things up now and I will only stop and say something when I have something um, significant to show you and because every now and then there will be something that comes up and in fact I'll want to show you what happens when I finish this, this canned good list. So I will pop back in and say something at that point. But in the meantime, I will just go through the process and do things faster.
Oh, one thing I want to point out here is I have Spam on my list, but Walmart does have their own brand of luncheon meat. But if I put in Spam, it brings up Spam. So I'm going to say canned luncheon meat. And then that way I will have the great value to choose from. Okay, now this week I'm going a little bit under. Let's see. I actually might be able to put in the canned soup, so let me see. They're typically about 50 cents a can. Actually, I can tell you already, if they're 50 cents a can and I'm getting two, four, six, eight, that's gonna be $4, which will put me over. So I am just going to finish this week's off being a little bit under budget, because again, the goal is to stay at or below 25 a week. So I'm, I'm going to just cut these, move them over to here. And by the way, you'll notice that sometimes I have a few things on my list and other times more, and that's just based on obviously canned meats and things are more than canned soups. Okay, now you can see that I am at the end of the canned items. And obviously this week I have a lot more because a lot of these things were inexpensive. So we're gonna go on to week five. And what I'll do is I'll go back to my primary pantry list and I'm gonna start working on condiments now. And again, keep in mind that throughout this process, because you can see I'm already done four weeks worth, each week I would replenish any of these items that I had used from my main pantry. But let's go back to building the prepper pantry. Okay, now I just came across something that is on my main pantry list, meaning the, the list that I keep well stocked for every month. And this is a refrigerated item. So anything that's refrigerated or could you know spoil easily, I take off of this uh, prepper pantry list. Oops, and you know what I just realized that I went over my budgeted amount. I wasn't paying attention. So I need to remove these and put them on the next weeks. So you do need to pay attention here, but if you do accidentally go over like I just did, then that's okay. Go back into your cart and remove the items that to bring it back down to the level that you want. Okay, now I'm going to just go through and on my own do the rest and I will show you what it's like at the end. I'll go back in and record the rest of the video and uh, so that you don't have to watch this whole process. But you get the idea of how you can use a site like Walmart to find the items and their prices and then plan out your shopping list. Now, if you have a store, such as Aldi near you, you might find that you can sometimes get some of these items cheaper. And that's fine, obviously, but this gives you a good way to budget and know how much you can get for your money. And that just helps your planning so that you build out your pantry over time without blowing your budget. So I will, after I finish this, I will come back in and I will let you know how many weeks it took to build up my secondary pantry at a maximum of $25 a week. And again, keep in mind that your budget may be different. You might have $100 a week or you might have $5 a week. There's no right or wrong way. It's just either you build slower or faster, but the main thing is to keep in mind your specific situation, your list, you know, like 
you noticed I put things like soy sauce. Maybe you don't like soy sauce, so it'd be ridiculous to buy it. Um, and I have things like banana pepper rings be, and olives because I love those things on my sandwiches and salads, but they're certainly not essential. So make a list that works for you. Okay, I'm going to close this off for now, and then I will come back after I have completed the entire process and just show you how long it took and what the results are. All right, I have now completed the project of going through and planning out, stocking up my pantry, my shopping list for what would be essentially probably close to three months because like I mentioned earlier, this main list that I pull from typically is really last more than a month but it's what I like to have on hand in my main pantry for each month. So when you double that, I end up with approximately a three month pantry and that's probably all that I have room for. So it, when I plan things out, it took me about 15 weeks to get all of the food items on and you can see then week 16 through 20, I have just the um, non-food products like uh, shampoo and body wash and that type of thing. So anyway, um, I hope that this is helpful for you. What I want to encourage you to do is again, to make your own list, think of what's right for you, what foods you like, what fits with your budget, um, this, my approach is a little less focused on survival, meaning I have a lot of things on here that are not necessary for survival, such as my olives and uh, peppers and things like that, but I really like them and it makes life a lot more enjoyable. So do whatever approach you feel is right for you. Um, I do recommend adding in some things that are just for fun and enjoyment and, um, Anyway, I wish you the best. I would love to hear in the comments what type of approach you use for planning your pantry and how you stay on budget with your planning. And naturally, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I publish new content. Thank you so much and happy prepping.